Hi, I'm Rob, N1NUG. Today's video is going to be another installment of my ham radio fox hunting series. Today in particular, we're going to be taking a look at a fox box, or hidden transmitter, courtesy of Bill, KC1JTS, who constructed this. Bill has chosen to build his fox box into a military surplus 50 caliber ammo can. These things are great because they're completely made of metal, which means they're rugged. It's already painted olive drab, so it'll blend into the environment pretty well. And when the thing is completely sealed up and latched, it is environmentally sealed as well. So the elements, rain, water, snow, things like that are not going to get in and damage the electronics inside. Now since these things are designed to be placed on public property, but kind of hidden, if say like a park ranger or even a member of the public came along and found this, and didn't know what it was, they may get suspicious that it is something more nefarious than it really is. So Bill has added very clear labeling on different sides of the box so that if somebody comes along and wants to know what it is, they can very quickly determine that and contact him if they have more questions. So you can see Bill's also put a label on top of the Fox box letting us know what frequency it's on and what PL tone it's using and how to activate the transmitter remotely. Now you can see also on the side here Bill has added a stud with a hole in it and that's so that he can put a chain lock or a cable lock through this stud. It'll lock this thing closed so nobody can get in it but then he can also wrap this around in a movable object, say like a tree or a fence post or something, so that if somebody does come along and want to try and take it, they can't easily do that. And then of course on the top, Bill has also added a BNC connector so that he can put a small rubber duck style antenna on here, or if he wanted to, he could even connect up a coax and run a bigger antenna. But for Fox boxes, really these little rubber ducks are all you really need. So let's pop this thing open and see what's inside. I'm not even sure. I haven't looked in here yet myself. So first looking at the box itself, you can see right here is the weather seal so that when this thing is closed, it's weather tight. And then here's the backside of the BNC connector. There's a short coax jumper between that and the radio, which we'll talk about in a minute. Down inside the box, Bill has got some instructions and schematics in this box that he used to help build the unit and a spare cable. We'll just kind of leave that alone for now. That's probably just where he's storing it so he doesn't lose it. And then he's also thoughtfully put in a desiccant pack to help keep moisture at bay inside the box. And then of course here is sort of the back side of the bolt that Bill put here so that he can lock this to a tree or something. So for a radio, Bill's just chosen to use a Baofeng BF F8HP. These Baofeng radios are a great choice for a Fox box. They're relatively inexpensive, easy to get on places like Amazon. There's plenty of information out there on how to program these. And if for some reason this were damaged or the box was stolen or lost or something, there's not a lot of financial outlay in this radio. If you threw something a little more high end like a Yezu or an ICOM, it might be a little disappointing if it were damaged or stolen. Now connected up to the radio's sort of speaker mic jack is the PyCon controller from Bionix. And you can see Bill has chosen to put a couple of ferrites in here to help choke off any stray RF that might be floating around the box, which is always a good idea when using a radio like a Baofeng, and then connected it up to the PyCon. Now to power the PyCon, Bill's just using a standard 9 volt battery with a Anderson power pole power connection here so that when he's not using the device he can just unplug the battery and that way the PyCon won't drain it since there really isn't an on off switch on this thing. So now let's check this thing out and see how it works. Now again with the battery connected the PyCon is energized and ready to go and I've got the Baofeng turned on and of course Bill's already pre-programmed everything so we don't need to do any of that. We just have to make sure everything is connected and put back in the box. So now just to test everything before I close the lid there is sort of a test button on the bottom of the PyCon controller. If I push that, it will activate the radio. You can see the red lights on, it's transmitting. And if I turn on an HT nearby, you can hear that the Fox is transmitting. So we'll push the button again to stop it. 
I've got my trusty old Alinko DJ1G programmed up to access the Fox Box. The frequency is set to 14655 and the PL tone is set to 203.7 as indicated on the label that Bill put on the box. Now I should be able to key the radio and push the DTMF key number one to activate the transmitter. Keying up, pushing one, and now you can hear through the receiver of the Alinko the Fox Box is transmitting this tone. Now this tone will play for like a minute or 45 seconds. I'm not sure how long Bill has it programmed, but at the end it will then play his call sign in Morse code and then turn off. Now the Fox Box will sit silent until somebody comes along again with the right combination of frequency, PL tone, and activating the one on their DTMF pad. So we'll try it again. There you have it. Seems to be working. Now the whole point here is that while the Fox is transmitting, I should be able to use my receiver to get a direction or a bearing using some sort of directional antenna or other technique and locate this thing. And that's what we're gonna do in the next video. But before you head off to that other video, let me know down in the comments below if you'd consider building a Fox box like this. And if you would, would you do it the way Bill did? Or would you come up with some other design or construction technique? Anything like that. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.